three recent Facebook changes you need to know about. The first one is that Facebook now lets marketers newsfeed bomb other pages. Now, this is news this past Tuesday. So this past Tuesday, Facebook said, hey, guess what? You can now tag other pages like you always have. But when you do that, sometimes your post will actually appear in the news feed of the Facebook fans of that page. You tag a page in an update. You've always been able to do that. All right. So in order to tag a page, it's a good idea to go to that page and like that page as a page that will ensure that their name will actually appear when you type in at, you know, the at sign, type in their name, and then you say something really nice about them. And then you post that update. So that's always been the case. What's new now is that some of the fans of that page will start to see those updates, okay? And I'm gonna emphasize some because there are a few factors here that come into play. They're gonna make sure, first of all, that that post is getting a lot of good quality engagement. And also the Facebook fans of your page are engaged in similar topics. You know, if you're a breast cancer organization and you mention a local clinic, that's doing a workshop about breast cancer, it will be a high likelihood that the fans of that page will see that update as well. Posts that are getting the most engagement from people who like both pages. So there, there's something here about, well, people like both pages. A lot of people like both pages, relevant topics that the pages share. Like I said before, Breast Cancer Foundation, Healthcare Clinic, they're both talking about ed, you know, educating people about breast cancer. And then the degree of overlap with the fan base. So this is the first thing that's that's kind of huge, I think. Of course, marketers are going to come along and some are going to spam and try and, you know, just at mention as many pages as they can in an update as a way to kind of game the system. But unfortunately, the news feed will dominate everything. And so those techniques won't really work in the long term. OK, number two, you can now add a call to action to a link post. So we all know like comment and share these are the call to actions that are that make facebook what facebook is now what facebook is saying is hey you can add other call to actions much more specific and relevant to what you're trying to achieve with the link that you posted so if you post a link to register for an event facebook says hey great you can tell people that they can sign up for that event you could use book now, learn more, shop now, download. Download is going to be for an ebook or you know some resource, ebook, a checklist, something that's going to be really useful that people can get. And you're posting the link. You're posting the link, of course, to uh, drive people to your website, but also to convert people. You know, they join an email list or they sign up or they book now or they learn more. There's some action that they're going to take on your website. Facebook is allowing you to create these call to actions in link posts. So the question you're asking is, well, how do you do this? And the answer is, I made a video and here's a link. So there's a YouTube video I created. It's actually in one of my most recent blog posts. You can read that there as well, or you can view the video there as well. But I'll include it in the slides and I'm going to send out the link to these slides on Friday. So everything's all in one nice little package here. You have to use the power editor. That's the thing. You have to use the power editor. That's why there's a video, because some of you are saying, well, how do I use the power uh, editor? And this video doesn't show you how to use the entire power editor, but it does show you how to use it to create a link post with a call to action in it. OK, so that's number two. Three is you can now target recent website visitors with Facebook ads. OK, so what does this mean? This means that you can now display a Facebook ad to someone who is just on your website, okay? Now, what's really powerful about this is that this targets fans based on their recent behavior, right? Targets not, not just Facebook fans, but any Facebook user, targets them on their recent behavior. So the audience is highly relevant. If someone's on your website and they're reading an article and then they go back to Facebook and they see some sort of, um, um, you know, post or update from the page about that same topic, they're going to be more likely to take whatever action you're asking them to take, okay? Because the audience is highly relevant based on their terms, based on their decision. This is what's unique about this. It's not about 
targeting people based on their likes and interests, which is most of what makes up Facebook ads, what people like, what their interests are, and so forth, which is relatively a static thing when you think about it. When you think about a person, their likes and interests, they don't really change from day to day, but their behavior is really different depending upon what's going on in their life. So this is really the first time where you're targeting people based on their recent behavior, what they've done recently, which is visited your website. And you can even target people based on specific web pages they've visited. So you use the power editor and you simply click on uh, create an audience, create an audience, click on create a custom audience. Now, up until now, you were limited in your options. And the, the options used to be just email, phone number, Facebook ID. Okay, so those were the options. And, and I've actually talked about custom audiences before, uploading an email list into Facebook, and then targeting ads based on uh, targeting ads to those Facebook users that have you know, those emails in their profiles. So this is different. This is now doing a custom audience on your website. So you click on create an audience, you'll see this option, custom audience, your website, you click on that, and then you create an art audience. Uh, it gives you a little bit of information about retargeting. So retargeting, if you've heard that term, it basically means targeting ads in response to someone's internet behavior. You, typically it's gonna be them visiting a web page, then they come back, then they see the ad. And we've pro you've probably had this experience where you're on Facebook, you look in your sidebar and you'll see, wow, I was just on that website. That's really interesting. I was just on that website looking, shopping around. And you're gonna see that ad. That is retargeting and that's what this does, okay? So you click on create an audience and then you fill in the rest. You fill in the name, description, you put a link in here and follow the instructions, more details at johnloomer.com. Uh, so that's it, less than 15 minutes. So the first question is from Charlotte. Will the power editor work on my iPad mini? No, the power editor will not work on the iPad mini. In fact, you have to actually use Google Chrome, which is a little ironic because these two companies are arch enemies, Google and Facebook. But for some reason, you have to use Google Chrome. And the reason why, Charlotte, is because maybe not for the web retargeting piece, but if you're going to upload emails, you have to use Google Chrome because what happens from a technical standpoint is that the Google Chrome browser will hash up the data or mix up the data somehow. And then when you upload it, it's it has a certain amount of um, anonymity. The data isn't really usable unless it's associated with a Facebook user. So Facebook has no ability to see or even use any extra emails that are in that list. And that's why you have to use Chrome because it has that piece to it where it's, it's hashing the data. So you have to use Google Chrome. Just to review the three big changes again, the first one, the strategy here is developing partnerships. That's what this really speaks to, developing partnerships with peer organizations, sponsors, for-profits that support your cause. That's what number one speaks to, okay? Number two speaks to converting people, being really smart, testing out different language and converting people with uh, a very explicit um, ask, okay? You know, call to actions are much more in your face. So this is really about converting people. And then the last piece here is really, what do we want our website visitors to do once they leave our website? Oh, well, we, we have this other campaign. This is what we can do. We can target these people. And recency, which is really what this is about, this is about recent behavior. Recency influences whether someone will take action, right? If someone goes to an event at your, you know, that you have, and then they go home, they go to bed, they get an email the next morning, they're way more likely to open that email that morning than they would if they didn't go to an event and they haven't heard from you in months. So recency is a real critical part of this. So with that, I will say thank you and have a great day. Stay warm if you are freezing, like I am up in the Northeast, and we will talk very, very soon. Bye.